if I may have your attention, I'd like to call the Opelika City Council work session to order. Uh, we have a, a couple of things that we would uh, like to get done before we move into our regular meeting. The first thing is we're ha uh, happy to have the Honorable Joanne Camp with us. Joanne, you wanted to come and uh, address the council? Can you get in? <laughs> so this is this is my home. Um, and secondly, I actually spent six months going through training as a strategy at Pine Creek and with the Berkeley County School Boards for allowing me to serve the city of Berkeley Lyca for as long as I have. There are some things in here that Joanne, I had asked uh, Guy to speak to you on our behalf. Well, I'd, I'd like to say that uh, the city owes Joanne a, a, a deep gratitude for the service she has provided to the city. <clears throat> I think it's remarkable that one person could serve as public defender for almost three decades. And... Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> as she pointed out, I've been doing it longer than she has. But <laughs> uh, actually, I went to uh, high school with Joanne's uh, husband, Jimmy Camp. So I've known Joanne and Jimmy for a long, long time. And uh, but Joanne has vigorously represented people charged with crimes in Opelika City Court and. That's a very difficult job because these people are often in a difficult place in their lives when they come to city court. City court's not a place where people aspire to be. I can guarantee you that. Uh, but Joanne has represented the people not only vigorously but uh, with uh, dignity and uh, grace and common sense. And um, she has done all of that. Um, she... Uh, um, if you don't know it, Joanne is bilingual. She is fluent in Spanish, and we have a growing uh, Hispanic population in, in Opelika, and uh, we ha now are seeing increasing numbers of Hispanic defendants in court, and Joanne can converse fluently with the defendants, which is a really has been a big help in city court, and uh, she's a very multi-talented person, so... She will be greatly missed, uh, and uh, I don't know that anyone's uh, 
can fill those shoes adequately, but uh, we'll give it a good try. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have uh, Marty Moore here from the Opelika Theater Company. Uh, she has passed out something for each of us at the, uh, on the podium. Marty, you wanted to address us? First of all, it's a thank you letter for uh, supporting Opelika Theater and the things that the City Council and the City have done for us in the past several years. Secondly, the, the next thing that you will find on your desk is a document outlining the curriculum and the format that Opelika Theater has in place and has um, we also have put our mission statement there, and I wanted to share with you that some in very exciting, important things are coming to the city of Opelika. Just last week, Opelika Theater was honored uh, to bestow upon the opportunity to become the second chapter in the state of Alabama to become a Penguin Project chapter. The Penguin Project Foundation was formed by a Dr. Andrew Morgan over in Peoria, Illinois, who is a pediatrician with the sheer purpose of giving children from the ages of 10 to 23 with developmental and neurological disabilities the chance to participate and learn about performing arts, more explicitly to be able to participate in live theater. The Penguin Foundation has taken Opelika Theater under its wing. We are exclusive to this area for at least 60 miles. We will be able to tap into Columbus, Georgia, um, Troop County, Valley, Chambers County, Russell County, the only other closest Penguin Project chapter is Wetumpka, Alabama, under the Wetumpka Depot players, who are very well known throughout the state of Alabama. This project gives Opelika a place of notoriety in the state of Alabama to be able to serve these people and these families, to be able to bring something here that will encourage more people to participate and come to Opelika. It will increase our revenue, it will increase our tourism, everything. It's going to take six months for me to get this completely in place. And the first um, rehearsal will not actually start for these children until July of 2023 because of the six month time frame that I have to get the volunteers ready and everything you know, in a prospective place to go. Dr. Morgan and his team will come here. Um, Opelika Theater does not have to invest anything in this project because they are gonna come here and train us and our volunteers to be able to make this happen. And so this time next November, it takes four months for these children to have a rehearsal. This time next November, these children will be able to produce a junior version of the musical Annie. So that is a big, huge opportunity for Opelika. Also, starting in January, Opelika Theater is going to launch the Creative Aging for Senior Theater and Dance, which will tap into people 55 years and older. A lot of us are in that bracket. And it's going to help with um, getting people of that age group out and active in the community, giving them something to become socialized, helping their cognitive uh, recognition skills, helping them to uh, overcome depression. 
It does not have to do with anything that they have to memorize because everything will be given to them as reader's theater or script in hand. Also, we are going to launch the second annual Black History Month celebration in February, partnering with NAACP AXO and REACH Ministries, where we will have a three-day workshop showcase um, celebrating black history and all of the artists who have come along throughout the era of the United States to bring art and the performing arts to this country. And one other thing that we have going for us is that the Missoula Children's Theater Tour, who has been around for 50 years, is now partnering with Opelika Theater to produce a summer camp in June that will also be exclusive to this area. Um, none of the other air, um, organizations around here can acquire them because we already have them in place. And so they are going to come in and work with our campers um, on a week's basis. And in one week, they will pr pr present a production of two shows. We have some scholarships available for these um, children so that nobody is left, you know, not being able to attend or participate in any of our programs. Our curriculum that we've set out um, already from my curriculum that I have established, and this is just a small portion of it, we have established the acting and the musical theater classes um, called OACT Academy where we train our actors and our students to be able to do musical theater. And already some of my students are being paid to do regional theater um, over in Columbus. Uh, some of them have already acquired scholarships with our program. And I just wanted to say thank you to the city and to the council. This is a foundation and a a dream that we had seven and a half years ago to give this to the city of Opelika. This is all for the city of Opelika, the community of Opelika. And we have the ability to touch other surrounding communities and bring people and get them to know more about what we do. And if any of you had the opportunity to see our latest show, Newsies, we raised the bar very, very high. We had over 1,600 people see that show in a two-week span. And since last August, we have reached over 4,200 people coming to see our shows. And each show gets better and better and better because we have a standard of excellence that we want to continue to push forward for community theater here in Opelika. And this is your theater, not mine. It is Opelika City Theater. Thank and you very much. that's what I had to say, and thank you so much for believing in us. We appreciate what y'all do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as we get ready to move into the regular meeting, a couple of things. Um, the Ordinance number one, uh, we have been asked by uh, the people involved to table that ordinance. Uh, they, they had a, a sales contract and the sales contract isn't valid until next month. And so the, they, the part of the contract says, you know, don't make it a FUD until we do, until we do the closing. Uh, and then the second one, uh, second ordinance uh, we have a request to suspend the rules on it that it deals with the election or the vote for the uh, sell, the school tax uh, that's already in place. This is not a new tax. It would be a renewal. Uh, one other thing on citizens' communication, we have um, been a little lax about communicating with the citizens when they were communicating over here. Uh, it is citizens' communication and it's not citizens' debate, so let's hold our comments and, uh, until a different time that would be more appropriate. And finally, I remind you that these mics are live 
And so if you uh, don't want to be heard, you need to turn them off. Uh, <laughs> we do have one bid. And we, we have one bid. And we do have one bid. I wasn't going to leave Lily over out there, I, especially when Joy raised his hand. To, <laughs> and so, hi, Lily. Good afternoon. We're asking the council to approve a contract for elevator maintenance, service, and repair. The bid opening date was October the 13th. The bid was mailed to six vendors. One bid was received. Recommend the contract to award the Mowry Elevator Company on the so be it meeting specifications. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. That being done, I'd like to call the Opelika City Council meeting of November the 15th to order. Call roll, please, Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen. Here. Ms. Norris. Present. Mr. Agent. Here. Mr. Rout. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. We're honored to have the Reverend Steve Bass from Trinity Methodist Church with us. I'm going to ask him to make his way to the podium. Uh, and we have Kendall Cornley and Paul Dickerson from Carver Primary School. Are they with us? Got Kendall. If you all would, would come up front. And she's going to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. If you would please stand. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great city that we call Opelika, the city that we call home. We're thankful that as we watch the news and travel and visit other places, Lord, that this city, uh, we're, we're just so much more thankful for where we live. Well, we're thankful for what we stand for here in this small family community. Uh, we're thankful, Lord, for what you have done in our past and where you are leading us to in our future. Lord, as uh, you have woven together this team of individuals to help represent and lead our city, I pray, Lord, that you would fill this place with your Holy Spirit, that you would give us uh, an extra dose of wisdom beyond our own comprehension to make wise choices that will affect all and, and help us to be the best city that we can be. And Lord, as we discuss the business of our city, let us not forget, especially in, in, as we approach the holidays, uh, those who the society has deemed as less than, those who are struggling, Lord, those who are in need of help, Lord, I pray that we would make choices that would help and honor those, Lord, in the way that we honor you. And so, Father, we ask that you join us now as we help make decisions that will guide us into a brighter, better future as a city. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all that you do, and especially thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray tonight. Amen. 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 Thank you both. You all have uh, previously received a copy of the minutes of the November the 1st, 2022 council meeting. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, they'll stand as presented. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, members of the council, you have in your packet the financial report for the month of October. As always, if you have questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to Cindy Boyd, uh, Joey Motley, or myself, and we'll be glad to talk with you about that. And speaking of Joey Motley, he has the uh, building permit report for October. Joey? If you notice, your report has a little different look. We have gone to a new computer system and formatting a uh, report that will come right out of the system, but that's uh, not complete yet, so we have uh, gone back to the original page there. You should have uh, permits for the month, uh, which is also your year to date, $53,232,757.60. If you'll notice, the that's the total for the, uh, for the October month and compare that to the other 10 years, and that's quite a large number compared to any other October over the last 10 years, and uh, the 
details on the back, some apartments and things, and some, a lot of big developments going on. We had 43 new single family homes. I, I, don't, I don't see the bubble busting in Opelika yet. Uh, there's still a lot of, lot of houses being built, and it's a good indication of our economy. Well, listen, we've got, of course, Allie Rouse is president and CEO of the Chamber. Kim Ward is the executive director of Opelika Main Street. And we're here to proclaim Small Business Saturday. Now, Ken, Valerie is one of your board members, but also one of our leading small businesses. But they've kind of got an unusual circumstance at the moment. Yes, so um, Valerie with Southern <coughs> Crossing, unfortunately, Southern Crossing was impacted by the July downtown fire. And so um, it just happened to be around the same time that Opelika Main Street was almost completed with our downtown resource center, um, which includes a retail incubator um, portion. So we invited, after they were impacted by the fire, um, Southern Crossing to be the first tenant in our retail incubator. And so since October, they have been um, there in our building on at 108 South 8th Street and have done an amazing job um, turning that, that place all um, into the holiday season into a great retail store. And we've had um, hundreds of people come through the store and um, we really are, are great. Um, it's great to be able to have a, a strong business like Southern Crossing back in downtown and able to provide that resource to them um, from the Main Street perspective. Yeah, we really appreciate yeah. everything the city and Main, um, Main Street Chamber have done to help us get back three months after the fire. So we're really excited. Yeah, we're so proud of Thank you. Thank you. Anything you want to add? No, I'm just, I was there this on Sunday for Holiday Open House and just to walk in and experience all that Southern Crossing is, but in a new temporary space was just very special. So Thank you. Um, very proud for y'all. Thank you. Whereas the city of Opelika celebrates our local small businesses and the great contributions they make to our local economy and community. According to the U.S. Small Business Administration, there are 32.5 million small businesses in the United States. Small businesses represent 99.7% of firms with paid employees and are responsible for 62% of net new jobs created since 1995. Whereas 79% of consumers understand the importance of supporting the small businesses in their communities. And they really understand this for Small Business Saturday. 70% report that they make them want to encourage others to shop small, independently owned retailers, and 66% report that today makes them want to shop small all year long. That's a lot of statistics. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of folks report they shop online with the small business. A lot of report that they dine or order takeout from a small restaurant, bar, or cafe. And uh, so Small Business Saturday is an opportunity for all of us in Opelika to demonstrate our support for local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our communities. And advocacy groups as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, I'm Gary Fuller, Mayor of the City of Opelika, declare November 26th as Small Business Saturday and urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small business and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, thank you, Mr. Mayor.
it is a great thing to have Southern Crosses back open in our downtown. And so if you haven't been there to see the new facility, please take some time to do so. <laughs> Citizen Communication, Mr. Jones. Okay, now at this time, if you'd like to speak to the Mayor of the Council, please come to the podium to my left over here. If you have not already, please sign in for sign in sheet with your name, address, cell phone, email. If you do speak, please take your name and your address. Please keep it to five minutes or less. I do believe we have one public hearing. If you're here for a public hearing, please let us back come. Thank you. church has been in existence since 1926 when Pepperell Manufacturing Company erected the textile mill on First Avenue here in Opelika. And the founders saw the need for spiritual guidance and enrichment uh, for its employees as well as uh, the, the builders itself. And so they were very instrumental in establishing two churches, a Methodist church and a Baptist Initially, those congregations uh, shared the same building, but as they grew, uh, they separated and places for worship uh, for each church was erected. Pepperell Baptist Church in its heyday grew to over a thousand members. One of the pastors that was instrumental in this growth was uh, Reverend Billy Hunt. And since Pepperell Baptist was not on the beaten path, the church under his leadership made application with the state of Alabama in December of 1978 to gain a permit to erect a sign advertising the church, which fell under a statute that was enacted in 1971 known as the Highway Beautification Act Outdoor Advertising, which covered signs on private property. Permission was given by West Point Fairpro to erect a sign on their property. And if you remember the old mill, the mill when it was running, its location on the, the old filter plant was the uh, parcel where this sign uh, was located. Not there at the filter plant, but on, on the highway. And it was just north of Pepperell Parkway. It was US 29 then. And today it would be between Advanced Auto Parts and the new uh, drive through smoothie store. It was a four by eight double face sign that read Pepperell Baptist Church two blocks with an arrow pointing in the direction of the church. And the permit was granted in January of 1979 and the sign was erected. Years later, the city of Opelika enacted their own regulations for signs on private property. And as the ordinance read, the church sign violated the provisions or guidelines in that ordinance, but we were told that since our sign was there before the city's ordinance that we would be grandfathered in and we could keep our sign. Our only stipulation was that we had to maintain it in good order and good condition. If we neglected it or if it deteriorated to a point that it was no longer uh, visible or practical, then we could not put it back up. As you know, the, the, uh, the textile property was sold after the mill was shut down, but it was not immediately developed. The new owner or owners never objected to the sign that, we, that our church had erected on that property. When development started, Hudlin Construction was the original site of prep contractor, and on several occasions, his workers and equipment knocked our sign down and one of our members would go over there and have them put it back up. But finally the sign was destroyed and done away with. Tried to get Mr. Hudman to accept responsibility but he was very oblivious to what had taken place. After the construction was completed and the business were, businesses were established, I asked the mayor for help in 
get him a sign reestablished, and he was very cooperative and interested in helping. He even volunteered to contact the owner or owners to get permission to re-erect the sign. I still would like to uh, exercise that option if this thing were to come to pass. And so Mayor Fuller consulted with Mr. Mosley, who was the <coughs> city planning director for his opinion. We met on the site, all three of us, to get better understanding of what was involved. Long story short, Mr. Mosley concluded that since the sign had been taken down, it could not be put back up. He strictly interpreted the city's ordinance without regard for prior circumstances and our grandfather rights. And it was his opinion that since the sign was down, no matter the cause, it could not be put back. There was no wiggle room in his interpretation. Now my question for the council tonight is how or why did we lose our grandfather's status when we had nothing to do with the sign coming down we did everything that we were told to do to keep the sign in place and intact as long as it was under our control. The sign has a lot of value to us, even in, a, in our electronic age. People have come to visit our church on Sundays and uh, first time visit and would ask them, what brought you here today? They said, I saw your sign. And, and, and if, uh, or, you know, uh, you don't know where the church is, just go down Fairfield Parkway and you'll see the sign. Now, this is the last thing. If we had taken the sign down or neglected it, I wouldn't be here tonight. I just want to know how did we lose our grandfather's status. Our permit with the state is still intact, still valid, and it's been renewed every year since its inception. And so I'm here tonight to ask for your help and, and to gain some Thank you, Ms. Newman. Other? Having none, we'll move on. General business, Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first item under general business is a request for temporary street closure from Opelika Main Street on November 27th, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Avondine, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rupp. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Second item is a request for temporary street closure for Young Life 5K event on December 4th, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Third and final item is a public hearing for a weed abatement assessment at 915 York Avenue. This is a public hearing. I declare a public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Bids, Ms. Finley. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having nine, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Thank you. Thank you. Resolutions, Mr. Gunner. Mr. President, the uh, first resolution approves travel expense report submitted by Denise Rogers of Municipal Court and Laura Hughley of Economic Development. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. 
Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Norton? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number two authorizes the mayor to dispose of a double wide trailer and surplus municipal property. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Thorne? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number three authorizes the Public Works Department to purchase two grasshopper mowers from Mow Ridge Manufacturing at a total cost of $22,402.60. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine caller roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number four authorizes the Parks and Recreation Department to purchase sports lighting for Floral Park soccer fields uh, from Musco Sports Lighting, LLC, at a total cost of $219,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, as you're aware, uh, Ms. Joanne Camp has announced her retirement as part-time municipal pro uh, defender and public defender. Uh, that will become effective on uh, December 31, 2022. You have before you a resolution to appoint Harold Morris to serve as public defender beginning January 1, 2023. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Smith? <clears throat> aye. All voted aye. Resolution number six approves a professional services agreement with L.P. Campbell Company for grant management services in connection with the recreational trails grant uh, the city received from the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs. The total amount of the grant was $210,000. Uh, L.P. Campbell's uh, compensation for grant management services is $12,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have an call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number seven approves an agreement between the City of Opelika and Next Request LLC for a subscription to uh, software for the management of public records request. Uh, pursuant to this uh, agreement, the compensation, the annual compensation to be paid to Next Request is $4,194. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number eight approves a license agreement between the City of Opelika and Earl Dudley LLC. Pursuant to the license agreement, uh, Earl Dudley LLC will install a continuously operating reference station at City Hall. This will consist of a small antenna on the roof and a uh, receiver box that will be located in the basement. And uh, the city will receive uh, $700 per year as compensation. Uh, this is a um, this particular arrangement will benefit the city in that uh, the city's engineering department, particularly its surveying uh, crew, can use the uh, GPS, um, um, the GPS uh, applications that are available through uh, uh, Earl Dudley LLC. So it will benefit the city two ways. We receive compensation for the license, and then it benefits our engineering department, secondly. Is there a motion for approval? 
So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Agee? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number nine approves a diversity train, a contract with Diversity Training Group LLC for diversity, cultural inclusion, and anti harassment training for city employees. Uh, the compensation to be paid to uh, Diversity Training Group in connection with this contract is $15,000. Uh, the the resolution author also authorizes an additional $4,000 appropriation for training materials and lunch uh, to be provided to employees on training days. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have an on call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 10 uh, accepts a proposal and authorizes the award of a contract to Sane Associates Incorporated for professional transportation planning and engineering services in conjunction with uh, intersection analysis at 2nd Avenue at 10th Street and Pepper Parkway at Pleasant Drive. The compensation to be paid uh, to Sane pursuant to this agreement is $30,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Agee? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number 11 also accepts a proposal for professional traffic engineering services uh, submitted by Sane Associates for retiming of existing traffic signals in the city of Opelika. This is phase two of their contract. Uh, the total compensation to be paid to Sane under this proposal is $48,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Agee? Enthusiastically, aye. <laughs> Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 12 uh, approves a quotation from CDW Government LLC for the city to purchase Cisco surveillance cameras and related hardware. The total compensation to be paid to CDW Government pursuant to this quotation is $389,077.92. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Agee? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number 13 uh, approves a engagement letter with Hemorite, Hughley, and Bold for auditing services. The total compensation to be paid uh, to the accountants pursuant to this uh, resolution is $89,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Aye. Mr. Agee. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 14 approves a special use permit in favor of level up assets to construct a new 144 foot tall monopole. Uh, a wireless tower to be located at 600 Floral Street. This item is on the table and would require a motion to remove from the table to be considered this evening. Is there a motion to remove it from the table? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Aye. 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 Mr. Rout. Aye. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye to remove. Now is there a motion to approve the request? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Discussion. So I just want to thank everybody who's um, weighed in on this tower over the past few weeks uh, on all sides of it. Received uh, a lot of good information that uh, truly 
made this a decision that, that came down to a few things in my particular uh, opinion. So, uh, and I, I do want to uh, spell those out here for just a second. Number one, as uh, we heard repeatedly, unfortunately, the, any safety concerns about the tower is uh, outside of our purview. Uh, our ability to deny the tower for safety concerns of RF radiation would uh, lead to uh, us being sued for denying it for a reason that we can't deny it for. We'd have to then vote to fund legal defense using city money for a case that we would lose. And in my opinion, that seems like bad stewardship of tax dollars. Uh, number two, uh, in my opinion, it comes down to uh, another thing too. We've got areas that uh, the tower can be in and if we can either use the location that is presented for us or uh, we can use three or four other, other towers to cover the same location. I, I have to uh, vote for efficiency in doing it, knocking everything out in one foul swoop rather than coming back and uh, setting up four different towers. In addition, I'd say that uh, when it comes down to the health effects, uh, since that is at, has been taken away from our purview via Congress granting the FCC a dominion over that, uh, reach out to our new congressman, our new senator. Uh, talk to Senator-elect Britt, talk to Senator Tuberville, talk to Congressman uh, Mike Rogers. He's been there for quite a while and has a lot of pull. They may be able to go ahead and uh, influence the FCC to uh, relook at the safety concerns. It's gonna have to be at that level. Uh, unfortunately, at, at our level, we cannot push that. Uh, that's all I have. Others? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? May. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Motion carries, four ayes, one nay. Resolution number 15 approves a special use permit in favor of AT&T to modify its equipment on an existing 190-foot uh, tall self-support tower located at 1315 Madison Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Yes, Mr. President, if I may. This is... The this is the, the frustration. We have a lot of these permits that we have put up that we have special use permits. If we are constantly requesting special use for special, uh, you know, the special request for these permits, what is, Guy, what is the, the reason for the special request? Is it location? Is it to residents, I'm guessing? Well, in this case, the the carrier wishes to modify the equipment on the tower. So we're looking at it from a safety standpoint. Would it be safe to allow them to modify the equipment? Okay. In, in, in other words, would it change the structural safety of the, of the wireless tower to do that? So they already have a special use permit? and They already have one. This is just to modify the equipment on the existing tower. Is the, is the tower too close to residential? Is that where it requires a special use? No, no. Anytime that a company wants to modify the equipment on the tower, it requires a special use permit and a review by the city. Got it. Our consultant looks at those requests very closely and uh, makes recommendations to the city council. Absolutely. So and uh, it comes from there. In this case, our consultant has recommended approval of the special use permit. Good, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't like it when people are talking about the city being unsafe in a lot of this, the, the permitting and, and the whole process through this. That's the biggest frustration is because it, it, it is safe and we, we do this routinely. Um, so I appreciate your service and everything you do. Others? 
I also just want to speak to that too. Um, I'm glad that you clarified that this is a safety issue and we want to make sure that we keep the, the city safe. Um, and just to piggyback on our previous um, vote in regards to the, the tower, that was my purpose for voting nay as well. And I also wanted to give a voice to the citizens who overwhelmingly came forward and said that uh, they did not want the particular tower. Now, I do understand. Point of order, um, Mr. President, this is not germane to the I current. Do understand I'm sorry. The current I'm, agenda. Sorry. I'm talking about safety. I know, but there's a point of order about the, the conversation going back to the previous um, resolution. So okay, thank you. So I'll, I'll carry on about the current uh, issue. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you did uh, verify and confirm that this particular issue in regards to this special permit that we're talking about currently is in regards to safety because I do also want the community to know that safety is our top priority for our citizens here in the city of Opelika. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you. Others? Call roll, please. Mr. Ellis? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Aiden? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 16 approves a special use permit in, in favor of Verizon Wireless to modify its equipment located on a existing uh, wireless tower located at 10 Veterans Parkway. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Admin nine, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Aiden? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 17 approves a weed lien in the amount of 130 dollars 64 cents against the property located at 915 york avenue is there a motion for approval so moved is there a second second is there a discussion avenue call roll please mr allen aye Ms. north aye mr agent aye mr rock aye mr smith aye all voted aye uh, resolution number 18 is a resolution to approve a contract for services to be entered into between the City of Opelika and the Arts Association of East Alabama, the compensation to be paid to the Arts Association pursuant to the contract is $25,000. This item uh, was tabled and would require a motion to remove from the table to be considered this evening. Is there a motion to remove it from the table? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Now, is there a motion? Oh, excuse me, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. 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 Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Now is there a motion for approval of the um, contract? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? Yes. Um, yes. But my understanding is that this was, there were some issues surrounding this particular contract. So uh, for this one, we, uh, there's a meeting scheduled between uh, President Smith I mm -hmm. and East Alabama Arts uh, leadership next Tuesday to just get some background information on um, uh, operations governance and, and just kind of uh, have a discussion with them and kind of, so um, I'd like to motion to retable this uh, once the uh, discussion uh, is completed. If anybody else has got any other uh, anything else they'd like to say, but did want to let everybody know that uh, we are moving forward with discussing uh, with East Alabama Arts. Uh, unfortunately, schedules over the last couple weeks, uh, both theirs and ours have been. Uh, so we're voting difficult. to approve the contract prior to the discussion. No, I'd I'd move to I, I'll move to retable. Oh, once. this is a mo you're moving to. Yeah, I'm going to move to retable, but I don't want to step on anybody's toes. If anybody has anything else they want to say first. Before we entertain this motion, does anybody else want to, want to address this issue? Um, I do have another comment or well, question. Would you, will you be providing us an update on the outcome of the meeting as well? Yes. Okay. Others? Okay, so you make it a motion? Motion to table. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye at the table. Resolution number 19 approves a contract for services between the city and the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Lee County. 
the amount to be appropriated to this agency for this fiscal year is $42,500. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Ager. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. For many, many years, the uh, East Alabama Health Care Authority, which is uh, doing business as East Alabama Medical Center, has provided uh, ambulance services for the city of Opelika. You have before you resolution number 20, which uh, approves the renewal agreement between East Alabama Health Care Authority and the city of Opelika for emergency response rescue and ambulance services. The amount to be paid for these services for this year is $315,740 plus an additional $60,778 uh, to replenish the capital account. The capital account is used to buy ambulances, equipment, and things of that nature. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 21 approves a contract for services between the city of Opelika and Opelika Theater Company. The amount appropriated to this agency for this fiscal year is $5,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Mr. President, if I may, um, Weidler, Stare here, um, Libby and uh, Marty, thank you so much for everything you do in our community. And I've seen personally the, the growth that has happened and I appreciate it. Others? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Ager. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number 22 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $2,500 to uh, envision Opelika uh, on behalf of the um, Worthy Squared uh, organization. The purpose of this uh, appropriation is to provide support services to children and youth who are victims of sexual exploitation. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Ager. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Ordinances, Mr. Gunner. Mr. President, the uh, first ordinance is before the council for second reading. This is an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the city of Opelika by rezoning 8.928 acres uh, from an M1 district to a PUD. This property is located on the former Lesnar Mill site and would be developed as 42 cottage style single family homes. The applicant has requested that the city council table this item until it has done all of its due diligence with respect to the purchase of the property. So if the council would like to table, we'll need a motion to that effect. So moved. <laughs> Go ahead. We, have a, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Aye. Norris. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted out of table. Uh, the second ordinance is a very important ordinance uh, pertaining to education. I see uh, our superintendent of education, Dr. Farrell Seymour, is present. Uh, and uh, this is an ordinance to renew, uh, well, to hold a referendum for the purpose of renewing an existing 11 mil avalorum tax that will be used solely to support education in the city of Opelika. I want to stress this is a renewal of an existing tax and is not a new tax. And the purpose of this, res this ordinance is to, uh, is to set the special referendum uh, and that will be set in February, February the 28th, 2023, which is the fourth Tuesday of the month. All special elections have to be either on the second or the fourth Tuesday, and uh, this works out better for everyone being the fourth Tuesday of February. Again, uh, the administration is recommending suspension of the rules and uh, 
for this matter, and it would require unanimous consent to suspend the rules. Ask for a member of the council to introduce this ordinance. My pleasure. Ms. Norris, thank you for doing so. Now, is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agee. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Now, is there a motion to approve the uh, date of the election for the special school tax so uh, renewal? We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Discussion. So, uh, just for to make sure everybody's clear, this will be the first time that the new uh, voting location since redistricting will be effective and in use, correct? That is correct. Okay, perfect. Yeah, to follow up on that, the and and the reason that, that Mr. Asia asked the question is the redistricting for the municipal election doesn't affect your state election and your national election. So we had several people that thought they would vote in some place at the election that we had just two weeks ago to be to find out that they were still at the old place. And so, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So, other. Call roll, please. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agee. Aye. Mr. Rupp. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Is there any other further business to come before the council this evening? Uh, yes, I, I would like to still request uh, President Smith if we could add to the agenda a section after citizens communication for council communication. Um, I think when the citizens speak and we're not able to you know, talk back to them or comment, um, I'm, gl I'm glad that you know we try to make them aware of that but I also think it's a great opportunity for us as a council to be able to give information about things ongoing in our wards um, we can communicate that through this meeting um, as well an opportunity not to have a dialogue with the citizens but um, I'll, but share information with them so if you would consider that I would appreciate it thank you thank you President Smith okay the character trait of the month is gratitude the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. Call roll plate for the, uh, the oh, excuse me. So move. A second. <laughs> Mo motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. I got to stumbling around up here. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norm. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr.